your girl loves a slow burn, so it's been very painful. Hello, Romas. This is Romy here. Welcome back to our life. Be be beginning and beginnings and always. <laughs> You'd think I would know the freaking game's name by now, but I surely do not because I keep saying our life and not the rest of it. But here we are stepping into step three or attempting our way to stepping into step three. I bet you could see- uh, oh, sorry. I bet you could use some help with that. That'd be absolutely wonderful. Derek glanced between the two, his, brow his eyebrows furrowed. Is there something I could do? Your mom has exchanged a fond expression while shook her head. How sweet. That's very sweet, Derek, but it's alright. It's not your job. Technically, your dad left you under Cliff's watch. You're meant to be taken care of, uh, care of by him, not doing chores for the neighbors. Mom laughed a little over her own joke. You watched Derek look away, discouraged. It's okay. I don't mind. He was a little bashful about it. You wonder if Mom's joke had just reminded him that he was initially meant to be invited to lunch. It was getting a little awkward. Mom grinned sympathetically. Her comment was meant to lighten the mood, not bring it back down. Mom tried again to get things moving forward. Why don't you kids go have fun? You all can come back in an, about an hour. We'll make enough for everyone. Mom nodded in agreement. Sounds good. Another stunning idea, Lonnie. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, so cute. That sounds like a plan, then. I don't want to cramp your style. I've got some stuff to work on, so I can be out of your hair this afternoon. You should come by later, too. No reason you should be the odd man out. Mom seemed amused as Cliff rubbed his neck nervously. He grinned a wavering but pleased smile. Thanks very much. I appreciate the invite. He looked over the assembled crowd with knowing glances. I can help, too, with as many people as you're feeding. That's going to be a lot of food. Mm. Didn't you hear what we told Derek? It wouldn't be fair to make you cook when we're the ones who are inviting you in. Ma raised an eyebrow when Cliff waved it off. Come on. I insist. Oh shit. When someone insists, you just gotta deal with it. Derek would be missing time with his pals. This would be a break for me. I'm quite the chef. Ma and Mom exchanged further glances before Mom shrugged. True. An airtight argument. If you're sure, we'll be happy to have you, Chef Cliff. Cliff <laughs> Cliff's grin widened and seemed more hyped than you'd expect him to be about helping with lunch. Cliff shook his head, a fond smile on his face. Then all us grown-up people will be heading inside. I assume the rest of you kiddos are staying out. Maybe not all of them. Oh, Elizabeth. Yeah, around her age, I wasn't outside anymore. I was inside playing games, you know. Ma tilted her head. A silent question for Elizabeth. Your sister thought for a moment. Right. I'll stay with the kids. Oh, shit, really? That's fantastic. I would never have assumed she would do this. Well, their mom smiled at her while well, Derek and Cliff didn't seem to appreciate her phrasing. Yeah, like we're, we're only two years younger than you, right? But with the plan to decide, all three parents waved and headed for your house. It was just teenagers now. You teenagers. Elizabeth looked at you and the others, a curious expression on her face. So, what now? You silently wonder if Elizabeth only stayed out with you to avoid getting roped into work. Then again, she could just genuinely want to hang out. You couldn't tell with your sister. Cliff spoke up after no one else did to answer Elizabeth's question. Wanna go down to the shopping street? It's been a while, and I don't think there's a lot of other things we could agree on. Yeah, sure. Awesome. Sounds awesome to me. Unlike you guys, I haven't been there a thousand and one times. It's new to me. Let's do it, okay? If you guys really want to it, eh? there's nothing to do. No, let's do it. You strode across the road as a group, down to the beach, and then to the left. It took less than 15 minutes to arrive, one of the conveniences of Sunset Bird. The four of you looked around at the familiar shops, trying to see if anything caught your attention this time. Derek was the most enthusiastic. He checked out every stall with his eyes wide with wonder. Elizabeth and Cove were in good spirits as well. That's so cool! They ran over to a street magician who was currently doing a card trick for a group of enchanted tourists. Derek clapped when the magician showed a middle-aged man his card. Derek turned back to the group with a curious gleam on his face. Hmm? What does it take to perform here anyway? Do you have to ask somebody or do you just show up and start doing stuff? Who would you even ask? It's a public street. Hey, Miss Mayor, can I pull a rabbit out of my hat? Please, Flopsy is well behaved, I promise. Derek chuckled, his eyes searching up and down the scene. Maybe? Maybe there's a boss of the shopping street? No one does any of this around my neighborhood. It's just regular stores behind walls. It's different if someone wants a real store, but here I'm pretty sure people are just putting on their little shows whenever they want and do whatever. That's so neat. Will we be allowed to do something too? Wait, really? You, you want to do something? I surely do not. <laughs> Cole laughed and Derek began almost vibrating with excitement. Elizabeth rolled her eyes. What, what will we do? Well... 
I don't know what. Not yet. I mean, I just found out it's a possibility, you know? But there's gotta be something. We know cool stuff. I'm sure if we think about it, we could plan a show that be real, that really get a crowd pumped. You thought it was a great idea and wanted to be part of it. You felt he could try this idea on his own. Wow, weird. You thought Derek needed to abandon the bad idea stat. You gave a look to the other two. Mm, I mean, it's our last summer vacation day, right? Fuck it. <laughs> I'm in. Nice. I knew I could count on you. Now we just need the act. It'll come to us. Right. With some amusement, the gang continued to pursue, per peruse the stalls. Elizabeth found some earrings with a dangling, badly misprinted globe that everyone laughed at. Co picked out a blob as Iceland, but Derek thought it had to be a green, had to be Greenland. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a world with what looks like nine continents. What? I think you're both wrong. You went inside with Cove, you backed up Derek, you agreed with your sister, no, it's Australia. You stayed out of it? Uh. <laughs> uh. Where the fuck did I save over December? Um, let's joke around. Should we joke around? Cause I don't wanna, I don't want Derek to realize I am always favoritism Cove. You know, it's Australia. The other three giggled at your interjection. Suddenly, Cove froze. You stared at him and then tried to see what caught his attention. Is it Jeremy? This music. Every time we hear this music, I think of Jeremy. We saw a familiar face down the way. It all made sense. Between the oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Between the crowds, his bright hair stood out like a neon green bowl in a kitchen sink. It was Jeremy. Jeremy slowly drifted his eyes. I think this is the last time we'll see Jeremy, too. Because then we'll be, like, in, like even older. So he should go back to wherever that place was. Jeremy slowly drifted his eyes down the street. And his eyes widened in mutual recognition. He definitely noticed you. Oh, this time Elizabeth is here. Maybe she'll say something. Derek frowned and Cove tensed up. You couldn't help but remember the last time you seen Jeremy at Miranda's birthday party. No wonder Cove was already defensive. He stood there shocked. You glared at Jeremy. You waved at Jeremy. You decided to smile at Jeremy. You looked away. I'm glaring at Jeremy. You narrowed your eyes and projected your dislike. <laughs> Elizabeth raised an eyebrow. Her gaze swept over Jeremy without a hint of a clue. Jeremy simply scoffed to himself and waded deeper into the crowd of people. Derek relaxed and exhaled loudly. Okay, we, we don't even see him. I'm glad he's not going to start anything. He peeked over at Elizabeth with a tiny smirk. See? That was the mean kid. What? Huh? <laughs> she still didn't get it. That first summer day hadn't made nearly as much of an impression on her as it did for Derek. But he smiled and waved it off. Just forget about him. I already have. <laughs> he laughed and ghost smiled lightly. He seemed in a much better mood now that Jeremy was gone. Your eyes wandered over to where Jeremy disappeared. He hadn't forgotten the day you met him either. He was only to be in town for a vacation. With the parents he hated. That glimpse was probably the last time you would ever see him. Because last summer, it was with uh, Shiloh. This summer, it's with Jeremy. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the real that realization to everyone. You kept that thought to yourself. You broke from the group and went after Jeremy. Why would I? <laughs> I mean, I'm curious to know. But I don't want to tolerate with him right now. So I'm sorry if you're very tempted to know what happens. The game is free, so make sure to download it and play it so then you can figure it out. But I don't have to I don't have the tolerance or the patience to be messing with Jeremy at 11, 11 a.m. right now. Uh, you mentioned that realization, everyone. Jeremy's probably gone for good now. It's time for him to go back to wherever he's from. Yeah, guess we won't have to worry about that guy anymore. Derek kicked out a little rock in the road. It clattered forward and then ruined her to her stall. But I still think it's kind of sad Jeremy turned out to be, well, like he is. It would have been nice to make another friend. Cove shook his head. It was clearly not broken up over what it might have been. Uh, good riddance. I think I might want to see him again sometime. Maybe he'll become nicer in the future. I'm happy it's over. Stay quiet. Maybe he'll become nicer in the future. Elizabeth rolled her eyes at the strange farewell to the odd boy. Not interested in the slightest, she clearly didn't understand his impact. And at this point, she didn't want to understand. Jeremy was unlike anyone he had ever met before. I don't remember where Jeremy ranked in my list of XOXO droplets. I believe, was it uh, Everett? The one I hated the most became the one I liked the most. I think if his name was Everett, it, Nate's best friend. <laughs> You thought he was horrible, you thought he was weird, you thought he was stupid, you thought he was kind of pitiful, you thought he was kind of okay, you didn't know what to think about him. I thought he was stupid. <laughs> stupid and rude. I wish there was a rude option. He's stupid. 
<laughs> you and the group moved on from the stall and from Jeremy. It didn't take long for everyone to return to the joking. Y'all enjoyed what little time you had left as Elizabeth mentioned the hour was almost up. The little trip had flown by and our lunch must have been waiting for you now. Derek bounced on the balls of his feet. Okay. Come on guys, let's get going so we can eat. I'm starving. Uh, if we had to, I can't wait. I have <laughs> enough walking around home. Homebound, here we go. You nod sadly. Nope, I can't wait. Go stretch one of his arms lazily. Let's go then. He looked at you looked at him appraisingly. Ask Code to carry you back to the house. Oh <gasps> I could You guys were telling me you had like cuter um interactions with them because you guys raised his like uh, crush on you like to the highest I believe, like he was actually crushing on you. <sighs> Your girl loves a slow burn, so it's been very painful. <laughs> So if he rejects me here, I'm not even gonna be upset because you know, I set myself this way. <laughs> yeah, let's go to carry you back to the house. Hey, Cove. Yeah. Could you carry him back home? What? I mean, you're smiling though. <laughs> As you say, what? Cove smiles, said he was amused, while the tip of his eyebrow was full of disbelief. He explained you wanted to piggyback ride. You didn't want to walk back. You told him it was a special occasion. And decided to let it go. Oh, uh, I want a piggyback ride. Is that okay? <laughs> Tyler gave you one yesterday. <laughs> I want a piggyback ride, and you're the only one big enough to give me one. Cove sighed and shook his head. Elizabeth and Derek became a chorus of laughter. Come on, Cove, it'll be fun. All right. Cove stepped over to you. He looked like he couldn't believe what he was doing. Your lips crooked into a large smile. Oh, yay! Thanks! <laughs> he carefully crouched down in front of you so that you could climb on. Oh! It took a little bit of clamoring to get yourself completely up on Cove's back. However, when Cove slipped his arms under your legs and stood up, you felt very secure. Elizabeth watched with a smirk on her face while Derek laughed even harder. It was fair to, s fair to say that your antics were entertaining. You're glad Cove went with it. <laughs> I still recall the day where I'm like, maybe I'm goofing around too much and he can't take me seriously. And I continue to goof around. <laughs> Cove carried you home contentedly. Other than a few good-natured jokes at your expense, he didn't complain. He made it all the way back to your house without putting you down. It was a pleasant walk home, and in no time you had made it back. Derek got, th got the front door and held it open for everyone as you each moosied inside. The three parents were still in the kitchen. They looked up and waved. Welcome back, everyone. You made it just in time. I hope you're hungry. When Kova brought you inside, the parents couldn't help but notice the odd conveyance. Your mom were unsure. Your moms were unsure, and Mr. Holden raised an eyebrow. Everything okay? Oh, I guess from this angle, it does look like I broke my leg or something. Did you pull something with Chico? I'm okay. Oh, Cove gotten so strong. Good and reliable too, what a guy. Cove wrote his eyes at the commentary and started walking to your couch. He bent down and let you let yourself plop back on the couch. He could have just like let me off at the front door, but he walked me entirely into the house. Dude, thanks for the left. Cove exhaled loudly and shook out his arms. He seemed, he just seemed to relieve that he needed. Sorry if I'm heavy, Cove. So did everyone have a nice time out? She just for people to take a seat at the table. Plates and silverware have already been placed out. You took, our, took your normal seat. Elizabeth sat across from you and Derek took the seat to your left. Cove sat on your right. Oh, look at me, surrounded by cuties. Oh yeah, we had a great time. It was fine. I had fun. Uh, I really liked it. It was okay, I guess. Yeah, the bank heist went off without a hitch. <laughs> no, I really liked it. That's good in my book. Casually, Mr. Holden sat in the empty seat across from Cove. He smiled at you and all the other kids. Mom set down a platter full of water glasses on the table. She looked down at the gathering. <laughs> it's a good thing we have eight chairs. I can't remember the last time we've had a group this big over for a meal. Can you pass the drinks down to the other side? Make sure you all get one. Sure. Those close to the those close to the cups obliged and started offering waters around. As everything got set up, Ma chided Elizabeth to take her elbows off the table. No. And you shouldn't slouch. She pointed to Mr. Hona, who was leaning forward with both arms on the table. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Mr. Hona seemed unsure of all the, all the sudden attention. He carefully re re rearranged his posture to something suitable for a fancy dinner. He smiled sheepishly at Ma. Elizabeth rolled her eyes and Ma gave her a level to look at her. You shouldn't be impolite to the guests in the house either. Elizabeth groaned, long and long suffering. Ma giggled and Mr. Hona chuckled. No. The lot of you could learn a thing or two from Derek. He has the best manners here. Derek blushed, but it was true. His posture was upright and formal. He even held his fork gracefully. His table manners on top of all his attempts to aid your parents made him the motto of meal attendee behavior. Aww. It's nothing. 
It's true though, you've been a lovely guest. I've noticed that too. It's always nice to, nice when you stay over, Derek. Aw, Derek is getting so much attention at the very end. <laughs> Derek smiled and sat a little taller in his chair. Wait, this is the first time we saw Derek too, right? In step two? Mm. And do you have anything good to say about your other guest? She looked deliberately at Cove with a teasing smirk. Or is there nothing to say? Mm. Well, Cove is my number one, but he does still clean his hands by wiping them on his pants. <laughs> Cove frowned at that and absentmindedly brushed his hands on his pants like your mom's laughed lightly. There, there. Elizabeth, you should know. After all these years, Cove is hardly a guest anymore. Cove smiled awkwardly. Thanks. He's family. Manners, manners. Who cares? I don't think it's a big of a deal. You tease Cove for his bad habit. You complimented Derek on his politeness. You joked that Derek was basically an adult. You kept quiet and took a bite of food. I should tease Cove. And the next episode. <laughs> But anyway, we are ending it here. We still haven't stepped into step three, so maybe in the next one we will. I have to tell myself to change my girl's hair to blonde because I am going blonde again. Uh, but you, we won't see it in this series at all, and this may be step four. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.